Good morning, uh, Mr. Nelson. Wednesday, uh, May the uh, 13th, and you're going to be exploring chapter 27 today. You're going to be reading about color, and I need to give you a little tutorial on the two uh, color processes that we're going to be studying because everything you've learned about color in, in the past is really what we, we're going to call the subtraction or color subtractive process. Um, and everything we're going to learn new about color is called the color addition process, the additive color process. Um, and to make the distinction is kind of confusing because it's not intuitive at all. So first things first, when you begin chapter 27, um, what you need to understand is that the color that we see simply depends on the frequency of the light. Now, you've been studying light frequencies and wavelengths, and you know the lowest frequency of light, if you think of like Roy G. Biv, the lowest frequency is red light, which has the longest wavelength, and the highest frequency is the violet light, the other end of the spectrum, which has the shortest wavelength. And if you go beyond the visible spectrum, higher frequency, you get to ultraviolet, because it's higher than violet. And if you get lower frequency than red that you cannot see, you get infrared, less frequently, infrared light. Um, it's a nice, easy way to remember the, uh, the bookends of the visible spectrum, Roy G. Biv, from red to violet. Now, a couple quick check questions you can go through here. You, you know, obviously the human eye can only see the visible spectrum, so can we see infrared or ultraviolet? No, we cannot. Um, color that you see, though, is the color that's reflected. That's why this is called selective reflection. If a rose is red, it reflects red. If your t-shirt is red, it's red because it reflects red, and you see the color that's reflected. Uh, but that is to say it absorbs the other colors. So if you shine, uh, a, you know, for example, uh, you know, red light on this red tomato, red reflects red, you see red. But if you shine green light on this red tomato, green gets absorbed. So you see nothing because the, the light's absorbed. It's black. You do not see what's absorbed. The colors absorbed are what we say are subtracted. If they are absorbed, you do not see them. If they are reflected, you do see them. So in, in simple, simplest way to remember it is you see what is reflected. Um, if, if blue glass, which is transparent, appears blue, it's because blue light gets through it, so you see the blue light. Similarly, if this was a blue t-shirt, then light would hit the t-shirt and reflect in your eye. You would see the color reflected on an opaque surface. But if it's a transparent media like glass, then you see the color that's transmitted through. Um, now we know that, you know, the, if you look along the whole Roy G. Biv color spectrum, you could think of this full spectrum of colors of individual frequencies. There's more than just the, you know, seven colors Roy G. Biv. Um, but we often reduce it to just three colors, red, green, blue, R, G, B. And these are the three colors that are used inside television screens, your, your computer screens. There's only three LEDs that your uh, screens use to project all other colors. Same with movie theaters, they just use red, green, blue. Same with uh, stage theaters that do lighting, shining, any of these three lights can be combined to mixed to create all the other colors. And this is the additive color process. So if you shine all three colors, red, green, and blue, you actually get white. What? Now think about that. <laughs> if you mix red, green, and blue ink and crayon, you would never get white. Because in art class, um, anytime you've learned about color, like in your art classes, you're learning about really what we call the subtractive process. This is the additive process. So the additive primary colors, you only need red, green, and blue, three primaries to make all the others. Um, red and green mix to make yellow, green and blue mix to make cyan, blue and red mix to create magenta, and all three mix to create white. So red, green, and blue overlap to form white light. Uh, yellow on your TV, your TV doesn't have a yellow um, LED, but if they want to make yellow, they have to mix red and green. Red plus green light mix to make yellow light. That's how you see yellow. A blue object will appear black when illuminated by yellow light, because yellow is red and green. Blue only reflects blue. So a blue light appears blue if there's blue light to be reflected. If there's no blue light to be reflected, if it's the other colors, like red and green, or which is yellow, then it will be absorbed. Therefore, the light's absorbed. You can't see what's absorbed. 
So you see nothing, which is black. Now that could be a little tricky. So that's the additive primary process. Now the subtractive primary process is what you learned in, in your elementary schools, you know. Um, you get your subtractive primaries, magenta, yellow, cyan. Now you probably call these red, yellow, and blue, right? Red, yellow, and blue. It's really magenta, yellow, cyan. And if you open up your printers, if you have a printer at home with the tri-colored ink, uh, the colored ink cartridge, it uses, uh, you'll see CYM printed on there. CYM, cyan, yellow, magenta. The three primary subtractive colors. If you use cyan, yellow, magenta in any colored printer, you can mix those colors to create all the other colors. You can mix them to create red, blue, green, the what we will we'll then consider the complementary colors or, or secondary colors. Um, so the subtractive process is the opposite of the additive process. Okay. Um, read through this color mixing. Mixing colored light, mixing colored light is the additive process. Okay. And whereas mixing inks and dyes is the subtractive process. And then go, you can go through these questions. This is all through chapter 27. As you read chapter 27, I have some mastery and astronomy questions that will allow you to go through questions like I have here. A red rose will not appear red when illuminated with what? Well, if you shine red light, it reflects red, so it looks red. That doesn't work. If you shine white light, white light includes red, so it'll look red. If you shine, uh, orange is a little strange, huh? Because it's not one of our colors. But let's, if you shine cyan, cyan is blue and green. Uh, kind of like that uh, teal color or turquoise cyan it's that bluish green the color of the ocean so to speak cyan is blue and green and red reflects red so it absorbs the other two colors blue and green so if you shine cyan it'll be absorbed it'll it won't appear red it'll actually in fact appear black because those colors will be absorbed um this is how your printer works at home, mixing colored pigments. It, it, it first takes the, the magenta, and then the yellow, and then the cyan. These are the three subtractive primaries, and it overlaps them to mix all the colors. And then if you add black, because you also have a blacking cart cartridge, it gives you some contrast. Um, so you're going to be studying the additive properties of color mixing, which is how we mix light, frequencies of light, versus the subtractive colors, which is how pigments and dyes and inks and colors work and why. Your clothing appears the color it is because it's subtracting or absorbing colors of light versus what you can see, that which are reflected, the colors being reflected. Take some time to read through this. Take good notes. And then you could get to all these questions like, hey, why is the sky blue? You know, why is the ocean kind of cyan color? Why are sunsets red? Um, why are clouds white? All these big questions. You know, why is the, the, the water? Uh, kind of that greenish blue, that's that cyan, as opposed to the, the crests of the water waves, which are white like clouds. You can get to all these great questions. Uh, then complete the mastering physics. Um, and good luck. It's a little confusing. I have a couple additional videos I'll share with you from Physics Girl, a wonderful YouTube site that'll help you with this. Uh, until next time, be well, everyone. Bye-bye.